Afternoon. This is Nita with a timepiece garden. Panda's floating around here somewhere. She's just excited to be outside while it's halfway warm. Um, we had our first true freeze, freeze last night. So, um, yeah, you can kind of tell. Um, got the, the droopiness here. This is left of a pepper plant. They don't like cold. They don't deal with cold well. And you can tell the same thing from the zinnias. They're, you know, delicate enough that they're just like, oh my god, you know, it was cold. You can tell by the red one there. Um, so I'm glad I seed harvested when I did because I don't think I'm going to get much off of them. And then again, I don't know. I've got three days of, of 70 degree weather and I've got some like that pink one there that is not droopy at all. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on them. See which ones I can, you know, get seed heads for and which ones I can't. Um, otherwise, you know, besides the stuff that I knew, like the peppers that will not take a freeze, my little cold frames. I shake the water off of it. Um, and the green that's in there, those are my, um, those are turnips. Lots of greens for the salad and kind of on the back side. Not as big, but the, uh, the beets are back there. Still not as big, but they're still growing. You know, but the turnips are having a blast in here. Um, and it's not sparse. I went ahead and picked some. You know, good stuff. You come over here, you can see it again, where the, the zinnias are droopy. I'm not sure I'm going to get any more seed off of them. Yeah. These are my, uh, these are the Anaheim peppers. The other ones I showed you were the, uh, jalapenos. There you go. So these are the Anaheim peppers. Um, the few little Anaheims that are on here, just like that, it just came off in my hand. I'll go ahead and pick them. I'll probably use them as, like, herb spices stuff, because since they didn't grow large, you know, and they're not going to grow large since they, uh, since they're freezed. Wasn't a hard freeze, but it was freeze enough that it's, it's, it's stunted the plant. Nothing else is going to grow. So I'll be picking all the peppers off of it today. Um, same thing with the tomatoes. Wasn't a hard freeze, but you can tell by the droopiness of the leaves that it was a freeze enough. That, you know, it impacted them. I'm going to look at the leaves. Some are droopy. Some of the ones that were under, kind of self-protected by the rest of the plant, are still okay. But it won't take another freeze. Now, we're not going to have one for the next three days, but it doesn't matter. This is... This is when it's time to come and pick all the green tomatoes and um, make a, you know, trying to think, uh, fried green tomatoes or some uh, some other stuff that you can do with green tomatoes, you know. But that'll be the goal. And then over the next three days after I get everything picked, um, yeah, rip them out for the most part. My walking onions. Again, you can see them in there. Living life large and loving it. Doing what they do. My lettuce and my spinach. I know they look a little barren, but that's because I picked some already. It's already there in the house. You know? Green stuff for me. Alright, well it's time for me to get to work. So y'all have a great day. And I will talk to you later. And there's Miss Panda. She's like, what you doing, Mom? All right, y'all have an awesome day. And again, I'll talk to you later. Well, just a quick note. So I'm sitting here, you know, pruning back tomatoes. Um, you can see I took the squash out and took it away, not to the compost pile because of the powdery mildew that was on it. Um... There's my rack. Half the tomatoes are gone. Um, right now, I'll just cut back. I'll come back later and remove the actual base, pull them up, and uh, all the tomatoes that have fallen and started to rot on the ground. Um, i got to pick all of those up so I don't have volunteers. Um, long term, the walking onions will actually end up moving over here so I can have a larger area for walking onions. Um, again, long term, I have two types of strawberries. The ones at this end are, are ever-bearing. They bear fruit all summer long. The ones at that end are just spring-bearing. I have a large amount, you know, early in the spring, and then they just do nothing but do leaves. Um, in the middle, it's empty. 
um, and I actually want to separate the two. I don't want them to go together. And so I'm assuming my spring ones, since they go heavy in the spring, will end up in this middle row. I'll probably start them where the walking onions are, and the walking onions will actually move over here where the tomatoes are and or where the squash was. So they have doubled the size so I can expand my onions. Um, and I'm doing that because I have three onions left in the house and we're only in November, which is fine. They work. They work well here. They grew last year. Um, little cold frame. Everything worked great. Um, so I'm looking forward to being able to, you know, double that in size. Because, um, again, this was supposed to be the, the perennial garden, not the regular garden. Um, blueberries, strawberries, asparagus, the walking onions, things that will be here forever, you know. Um, feed the soil, maybe add some uh, some manure, some compost, but they're here forever. Um, anyway, back to tomatoes. And the other thing I was going to show, because they just happened to be here. Um, I will tell you I'm not a mushroom professor. Um, don't take my word for it, do your research type thing. But if you look here along the wood, those are puff balls. You can see them where they're growing directly off of the wood right there. Again, puff balls. Um, puff balls, if, and there's, a, there's an if there, if the inside is as white as a marshmallow are edible. Um, if the inside is any other color than marshmallow white, then they've already started to go, you know, toxic, decayed, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick one right here off the wood. You see how white that is? Come on, focus on the hand. There you go. You see how white that is? That's marshmallow white. And what that means is you can go and take this and, and fry up some butter and some garlic. And you can eat him. White on the inside. Again, I am not a doctor. I am not a horticulture expert. If you eat a mushroom, you eat it at your own risk. I just think it's awesome that I've got them growing off the wood logs in my garden. One of those sweet. <laughs> All right, back to picking mushrooms, or not mushrooms, but tomatoes. Talk to you in a few. All right, so these are the last jalapenos. You can say they're, they're small, they're not big enough to stuff or anything, but they're spicy enough to keep. So what I do is I cut them into little squares, stick them on some paper like this. And tomorrow when I get home from the pool, since it's supposed to be a cool 71, 72 degrees tomorrow, um, this tray will actually go sit on the dash of the car. Windows up, um, the car faces south, which is awesome, so it gets really warm in there really fast. And what'll happen is it'll start drying these out. I don't, I don't need an air dryer the car will do it um, and then I can bring them back into the house kind of grind them down in my mortar powder them down and then I've got a little bit of jalapeno spice to add to steak or some stews or whatever so that's the thought process here because you know they're too small to stuff or do anything with but they will make great spice once I get them dried out so let me get back to work you know get those little ones and get them here ready for tomorrow see you in a few All right, next up, um, I had a friend gift me these. Um, I don't have the right name for them yet. I've not completely looked them up, but they're a type of melon, not a watermelon, um, but a melon. You can see it's just barely bigger than my finger, and that's about as big as they get. Um, but they kind of taste like dill pickles. You know, you eat them as is, or you can cut them in half like this. And uh, you can see they got the melon look with the seeds in it. Um, I have them sitting out here. I actually want to um, dehydrate some of them. and Not dehydrate, but I want to um, seed save. Um, again, he gave me a little. I've eaten about half of them in a salad. I think they're awesome. Um, I need to do a little research and find out what the correct name of them is so I can label the seeds appropriately. Um, and I'm going to end up cutting all of these in half and letting them go ahead and, you know, dry down so I can get the seeds and um, grow some because they were kind of awesome. So, yeah, look for a, 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 an addition to this portion of the video with, with what the name of them are. All right, see you in a few. Dun, 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 and the tomato harvest. Um, lots of green tomatoes. 
lots of green tomatoes, lots of green tomatoes, lots of green tomatoes, and the last of the Anaheim peppers. All right, so the easiest way for me to say that is these guys here, my little pear shape, and you can already see where he's starting to change color, um, do really well finishing wrapping up in the windowsill. These guys also do well. Um, they tend to start out as a, like a dark green like this one is, and then they lighten up, very light yellow or light green. Um, and then here and here they start to blush, and then they go to this, and then they go to red. Um, but these guys do really well, really well, all of them, um, in the windowsill. They have all season long. These guys tend to take twice as long in the windowsill to ripen, or to finish ripening, um, as the rest of them. They take the longest amount of time. So, having said that, um, these ones will probably be the ones I do fried green tomatoes with. You know? It's just the thought process. Uh, but right now they're washed, they're cleaned, I need to go ahead and get all the, all the little toppy thingies off, because as they dry they get spiky. And it's just so much easier to take them off now while they're wet and fresh and throw them in the compost. You know, my little compost two and a half quart thingy. <laughs> it works awesome. Um, you know, I've already done it to these. All the tops are off of them. Let's get the tops off the rest of them. Um, so I'm not dealing with that, that top once it becomes papery. All right. That's probably going to be it for today. Um, Y'all have a great day. And I'll talk to you later.